that luck has visited upon us. I heard we have been infected from another team and will be disassociated, disinfected from each other to sort it out to a different country in the world. All this wonderful wisdom we formed together exploded. I've never been to another country. Why should I? I always thought that I would work in this country. I wonder what it will be like or if it will be different. They say all countries are becoming alike now. They're beginning to interresemble. But we have everything here. Why would you want to go anywhere else? We have everything here, even for a vacation, skiing, the beach, museums, or you can just go to Mexico. I went there once. But you could get the same stuff in California, and it was dirty to you, and the people weren't very nice. <laughs> anyway, it's too bad that our great staff is being broken up. No one really knows why. We all think it's because of the gold bug incident. I don't even know what happened. Something about a lesbian she was seeing in the company is so stupid. Those people on that floor are weird anyway, and I think their boss is a hashhead. <laughs> I hope I don't have to learn another language. You know, five already, but I'm just not in the mood for it. I feel everything when I work here. It's so exciting doing all this work, and so what if I don't know <laughs> I know something. I'm only 19, and I have my two MBAs plus a PhD in art history, so <laughs> I know about a lot of tasteful things in history. <laughs> as well as you know what, I told you that. I also have a degree in architecture. I could build a building if I wanted to. I built my own house in Nantucket. Who cares if the staff here is all white? We don't have to be. And I'm sure the makeup will change. Mr. W is a hashhead. He sells bags to the security guards. Don't tell me. <laughs> I heard the film they were making on Miss Pennybug was canceled. I'm glad. She didn't need a film made on her. And I really don't know what happened to her. Or why not. Or why. But no one ever listens to me. I'm the smartest one here, of course. That's why they picked me. And I make 100,000 more than everyone else. And I am really the boss, even though technically there are no bosses on our team. And of course, we're never supposed to use the word boss here. It's too vulgar and denotes a hierarchical attitude as seen from the bottom of the barrel. I feel nothing when I am here. But I refuse to believe that we are doing nothing in that office, even though they say we don't do anything. I know we must be doing something, or at least I must be doing something. At least in my heart, I know I am doing something with my mind. But I still feel nothing, which means I must be doing nothing. And all these people are so smart and passionate and seem to think they are doing something, but I don't. I'm beginning to understand that working here, we don't change anything. We just keep it the same, and that's fine. Some things should stay the same. It's the ones who don't get in here that change things and make the messes we have to repair. Look at Miss Goldbug. She started out as a mean status seeking bitch. Although now they tell me she was really a man. In referring to her officially, they just gave her a woman's name because it's easier to hate women in these situations. And then they gave her the name Goldbug because it's easier to blame the ones who always get blamed. Which I totally understand because it keeps everyone on the same track and induces a harmony among the staff. Now we find out she was neither a Miss nor a Jew. She was probably Chinese. It's a shame. <laughs> Apparently, whoever he was, he was killed by a disaffected journalist trying to get a story out of him, but he was probably in love with the character of Miss Goldbug because he thought she was Miss Goldbug. Young, attractive, intelligent, wealthy. But she rejected him somehow, and he killed her by feeding back her phone somehow on the internet. There's been a whole rash of cell phone murders in London lately. Better not to answer your phone. Just call someone instead. <coughs> but if they think it's a murder call and don't pick up, how will you ever communicate? If a fiddler played you a song, my love. Stop. And if I gave you a wheel. Stop. Would you spin for my heart and loneliness? Would you spin for my love? Real or not? <coughs> if I gave up all of my pride for the focus. And only loved you for now. Would you hide my fears and never say? Reorder. Tomorrow I must go. We would never say. And if I gave you a wheel. Would you spin for my heart and loneliness? Reorder. Would you spin for my love? Focus. correct. Boiled down to one correct sentence. And so the bugs are in the room. We've already revealed too much. Again. I'm tired. Can't we stop? No. We must clean up the language until the meaning is impenetrable. Inscrutable. Until it sounds like Abba. It already <laughs> seems fine. <laughs> There's weakness in the statement. Something I don't know. Something vulnerable. Cowardly. Frail. Delicate. Flower-like. We must excise it before it is sent out into the world. Again. I have learned that we seem to be working in some kind of ministry of information or disinformation, and that even though most of us are trained as lawyers, we are to deform the information into suitable forms of understanding to make it understandable to the general. We've been hired for our creative skills as well. 
Last week, we spent making thousands of origami paper form to induce complexity in our minds. Someone on the 70th floor created last year's best-selling novel under the author's name, the Miss Goldbook, who does not exist. They are not making a film of the book, but including the sordid details of the writer's life as part of the plot. I don't know why they would release this book to such a claim and then attempt to destroy the author's life and apparent career, especially since she created the book to their specifications. Why? Because the 70th floor is a collection of mean people. <laughs> people are mean, and they like doing that sometimes when they can, but not all the time because people are generally nice. I believe in the goodness of people. Speaking of which, our last directive was to destroy the credibility of Anne Frank. We did pretty well. <laughs> Succeeded in calling her diary nothing but a fantastic publicity stunt, totally funded by the Dutch government to cover up their own misdeeds in the Second World War. That was fun. <laughs> it wasn't a major directive. I think it was a training mission for the new inductees. And I must say, they did pretty well. More coffee? They have completely rewritten the life of Goldbug and released it as a feature film of some sort. I never knew Goldbug, but this is not the Goldbug I never knew. Apparently. <laughs> it's the romantic story of some kind of social service government pornographer gone good, gone bad. But Goldbug was an accountant on the fifth floor, I thought. And she's been changed to a man. <clears throat> I'm not going to see that film. Apparently, a character based on me is in it. Why would that be? I never knew her. But they did find her diary, and I was in it. Why would that be? My apartment was trashed last year. The filmmakers seem to be looking for some clues in their research. They can have everything. I don't care. I got a raise. I can buy new and better things anyway. So anyway, they tore down my house and put another one there. And now, I live in another country, in a house that's twice as big. Why? All because of Goldbug. Fuck that bitch. I just wanted a vocation. So they sent me on vacation, and I've been here for three years, going to the beach and reading magazines, listening to Pink Floyd music all day, <laughs> eating out of the hand of God. I'm not really myself these days. And Miss Goldbug, her inability to be able, the loss of her soul, and her mind, and her very soul, to forces beyond her control. Her weakness of mind, the very weakness of her soul, a pity. She fell into the valley of the shadow of a doubt. She must have made a misstep somewhere, and that coffee has made me sleepy again. I have to stop drinking it, even though it is decaffeinated. After I've memorized the whole speech, now you want me to cut it down and only say half. No, never mind the meeting for the whole thing. Just the main points. People will get the text of the complete speech anyway, and they'll be able to see what you really wanted to say. Although you didn't write the speech anyway, so what's the big deal? The big deal is that I want to be seen as someone with a brain that's not violently abbreviated. They're all fellow bureaucrats anyway. Do you think they care if you have a brain? They aren't missing anyway. <laughs> they never do. They always have to speak over the sound of garbage trucks. So get used to it. So that's the deal. Fill in the dots. We're not on the real front line. Is that all we are, dots? We are not the dots, we are the space between the dots. Connecting the dots. Someone has to do it. And it might as well be you. But why do I have to do it? So fill in the dots. Excuse me, we were wondering if the idea of sympathy for this. Sympathy? No, we don't have sympathy. We don't make it, we don't sell it, and we don't buy it. You have the wrong number. <laughs> 